So welcome back to the class Computational Neuroscience, Neural Dynamics of Cognition. What we have seen in the previous section is that we can think of the Hopfield model as an attractor model where over the course of several iterations we move more and more towards a fixed point and the final state would be very close to the fixed point. Now there's an alternative view which is called the energy model view. You could say, well, my fixed point corresponds to an energy minimum and then as if I start close to this minimum, if I start in one of the valleys, I would move down and approach the minimum. The minimum of the energy function E corresponds to a state with large overlap, which means that the network has retrieved one of the patterns, for example, pattern 3. If I start somewhere else, I would move down and end up in a different attractor, in a different minimum. So the energy concept is... Mathematically speaking, the concept of a Lyapunov function. If you have a dynamics, and if you have a function E, such that at each step you walk downward, or you stay, then you have a Lyapunov function. What I propose is, following Hopfield, that we have an energy function, which is given here, is the sum of all neurons, i and all neurons j, so it's a double sum, w i j as, as i as j. And we will argue in this section that this energy function is a Lyapunov function, which means it actually goes down. But in order to see what this energy function is doing, let us first rewrite it in terms of overlaps. So in the case of the Hopfield model, we will use random patterns and have a weight matrix, which is 1 over n, sum over mu, all patterns, pi mu, pj mu. This is my weight. And then I have my terms, si, the state of neuron i, sj, the state of neuron j, and I have to sum over all i, I have to sum over all j, and I have my factor one half in front. Now remember the definition of the overlap. Overlap with pattern mu is 1 over n, sum over j, pj mu, as j. Look what we have here. I have a 1 over n, pj mu as j sum over j. So this gives the overlap m mu, which means overlap with the pattern number mu. But now look at this. I have another sum, sum over i, pi mu as i. So I have an, another overlap, except that I'm missing the factor n, so the factor n remains. And then the only thing that remains is the sum over mu. And we still have the minus one half in front. So I have minus one half, a factor n, and then sum over mu, m mu squared. So far I consider the case of a large overlap. Now if I have zero overlap, any of the patterns, then the energy would just be zero. More generally, just look at the definition of the energy function. Minus one half, sum over all, all i, sum over all j, w i j, s i, s j. And consider an arbitrary state. s i is plus minus one, s j is plus minus one. Completely random, completely uncorrelated with any of the patterns. Then I would have here terms plus minus one, plus minus one. Suppose we have arbitrary weights, wij, that might be positive or negative. So I will sum over many terms, plus or minus one. So the energy of a random state will be very close to zero. So there should be random states which has energy close to zero. Then I have, if I have the Hopfield weight matrix, I have special states with large overlap. There might also be states with which are undercorrelated with one of the patterns, so it would have a positive energy. Therefore, I have a complicated energy landscape. The axis here is completely meaningless. It's just to indicate that we have an energy landscape with several local minima, and for the Hopfield model, this would correspond to the different retrieval states, states with a fairly large overlap with one of the patterns. However, I have not shown you that the dynamics would actually lead downward, down towards one of the minima. But here we have a nice theorem. Let's define an energy function. 
as before. And let's assume symmetric interactions. That means the weight wij, which is from neuron j to neuron i, is the same as wji. Then we assume deterministic asynchronous updates, which means that I update one neuron at a time. Then the claim is that our energy decreases if one of the neurons, for example, neuron K, changes its state. So let's prove this. So I start with my energy function. Since we assume a synchronous update, only one neuron changes. Let us consider this neuron and let's call it K. That means neuron K at time t plus 1 has changed, is different from the value at time t. But these are plus minus 1, so the only way to be different is that it's the same with the minus sign. If it was plus 1, it will become minus 1. If it was minus 1, it will become plus 1. Now let's look at the energy and let's compare the energy at time t plus 1 with the energy at time t. So let's plug this in. I have minus 1 half, sum over i, sum over j, wij, si of t plus 1, sj of t plus 1, minus si of t, sj of t. Now, only neuron k has changed. All other neurons remain the same. This means that the square brackets will be zero if neither i nor j are equal to k. And I have two sums here. Let me write this explicitly. It's sum over i, sum over j. So in this sum over i, which runs maybe from 1 to a total of n neurons, say 2,000 neurons, and in this sum over j, which also runs from 1 to n, at some point the j will be equal to k. Say k is neuron number 25, then there will be the situation, when I take this sum, that j is equal to 25. And that's the moment when the neuron changes. So, it could be that j is equal to neuron k, j equal to k, then I have sk of t minus 1 minus sk of t, and the si is the same. The si then has not changed. si of t is the same as si of t plus 1. wij. Now j is now k, so this is wik, but the sum over i remains. We have the minus 1 half. But it could also be that when I take this sum over i, that this index i takes the value 25, that i becomes equal to k. So this might also be a possibility. i equal k, in which case I have i fixed. So i has changed. I have si of t plus 1 minus si of t. Now sj, j is a free index. But sj has not changed, therefore sj t plus 1 is the same as sjt. And I have my wij, which I, which I plug in here. And so this is now the sum over j. Now this is interesting, if you look here, because this is just hi of t. This is the total input to neuron i. Here I wrote i, but I said it's i equal k, so this is really neuron k. Now, neuron k has changed, but if it changes, then sk is just, sk at times t is just the negative of the state at times t plus 1. So I can write this as 2 times sk of t plus 1, and I have to factor 1 half. This was the case i is equal to k. Since i is equal to k, I can actually replace the index i here by the index k. It's the same neuron. So now I have hk here and I have sk there. So this was the term i equal k. Let's now work on the other term, j equal k. Here I have a sum wik si. Now here we assume the symmetric interactions. We exploit the fact that we have symmetric interactions and therefore wik 
is equal to WKI. So I can replace this term here, WIK, by WKI. And now you see that I have a sum over I, WKISI. But this term is now exactly the field HK of T. Now look at this difference here. This is the neuron that changed. So SK of plus 1, so this argument should be T plus 1. SK of T plus 1 minus SK of T is 2 SK of T plus 1. That's this relation here. And then I can hop copy the minus 1 half. So now we see two things. Okay, I have a minus 1 half, which cuts this two. I have minus 1 half, which cuts this two. I have twice the same term. So I have minus 2 hk of t times sk of t plus 1. And now here comes the important insight. Suppose hk is positive. Okay? Neuron k was the one that changed. If hk of t was positive, then h sk at t plus 1 will be plus 1. So this product is positive. If h is negative, then sine of hk is minus 1, and that will be the state. If minus times minus, again it's plus. So this is always smaller than 0 or equal to zero if there is no change. But since we assume that only one neuron changed, and this is neuron K, the change is actually negative. And this is what we wanted to show. The energy decreases if neuron K changes. We are done. So the energy picture is very useful, and historically it is, has been very important. Hopfield wrote his article in, 90, in 1982 about the neural networks and physical systems with emergent collective properties. And the fact that it was an energy picture made that many researchers, many physicists joined the field of attractor networks, studied these networks. So it has been really influential. On the, on the other hand, the energy picture sort of is a sidetrack. It needs symmetric interactions, but we don't have symmetric interactions in biology. It has been used for many calculations, but it turns out that some of the calculations you can redo without the energy picture. However, the energy picture suggests that there is something very general. Interacting neurons in a network can move towards fixed points, even if we don't have random patterns which, which exactly have a mean zero of the activity. So there is something generic going on, and that's what we are going to exploit in the next sections. But before we go there, let's have a look at the quiz.